So what I've given you here is the is the definition, right? So this is um, this is the limit, the difference quotient. But remember that there's this there's this part over here. There's this f prime of a. That's what this limit is equal to. Okay. So that's something that I think we often forget. Lots of times we just see we just see this and we say, okay, we'll solve this limit. Right? We give you something like that and then we say tell you to solve it, and that's fine. But remember what that means. That means that at least when we have an a plus h form, we're using a instead of x notice, that that's the derivative at a point. That's the slope of the curve at a point. And so um, what that means is that when we have examples like this, we can actually pull more information out of that example without kind of having to do a bunch of obnoxious algebra that we did early on in this chapter. So um, let's look at this example right here, um, this limit as x approaches 0 or as h approaches 0 of 3 plus h squared um, minus 3 plus h minus 3 squared plus 3. And so I want, uh, what I want to try and do is pull out um, what the value of this limit is without trying to foil everything out and simplify in that, using that method, okay? Now this one actually wouldn't be terrible, but if that was a, a cubed or a, to the fourth power, then it would really be bad. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to notice a couple things. First, I'm going to notice that this right here, I believe, is that f of a plus h part. Okay, that's the f of a plus h. Okay, that means that this piece over here must be the f of a piece. Okay, um, and so. Now that we know those two things, I think we can deduce what f of x might be, okay? So here's what I'm thinking. If, um, if this is the 3 plus, this is 3 plus h, that means a couple things. First of all, that means that a is equal to 3, right? That's in the place of a up here. It also means that my function f of x has to look something like this. It has to have something squared, or x squared in other words, okay? And then it also has to have, because we've got another 3 plus h here, it also has to have minus x. So our function must be x squared minus x. And you might be thinking, well, that doesn't really match up with the other um, part over here. In other words, if I look at this 3 squared plus 3, that doesn't really seem, at least obviously, to be f of a. Well, let's check. Um, remember that if we factor a negative out of that, we would get negative times... 3 squared minus 3, and I think that matches up exactly with what we think f of x would be. So all that's happened in the limit is before they gave you the problem, they, um, they distributed the negative, okay? So th if this is my function, then what this question is really asking me is it's saying, hey, find f prime at at 3 when your function is this, okay? And to do that, we just need the derivative of, of the function, which is simple enough to figure out, 2x minus 1, right? And then so f prime of 3 is just simply 2 times 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2 times 3, which is 6 minus 1 is, is 5. Okay, so I want you to remember um, that if a problem comes up like that, that that difference quotient means the derivative at a point. And if we hadn't put a point in there, if we had just left x, all that means the derivative at any x. Okay, so even from that, you shouldn't have to solve out the limit. You should, at least somewhat frequently, be able to deduce what the function is and then use the shortcuts even from there. So when you see a limit problem like this, hopefully you can work your way back to what that limit the difference quotient really means and um, maybe save yourself some some time and and maybe some algebra mistakes along the way too. So hopefully that helps you out in kind of understanding the connection between the derivative, the difference quotient, and using those those facts together.